This is a HeadGum Original. This is Punch Up the Jam, the podcast in which we take the greatest hits of all time and we make them even greater. This is our first time ever here in the HeadGum Video Studio. We've got the logo. Yeah. We've got the inspirational albums. Fake Grammys. We, you're, you're seeing our face for the first time ever. I guess you could you could still be listening to the audio if you're just on a podcast app. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, you could click over. You could watch us on YouTube. And also, we're here with Julian. How's it going, everybody? How you doing? What a delight. Julian, who didn't even know this is going to be a video. No. This is just This is how good he looks. He showed up <laughs> and he was like, I'm so glad we're just doing a podcast and not a video. That is a thing that, you know when you think and there's like words in your head? and they stick with you like a conversation. I, yeah, I call sure. that a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's my podcast. own personal podcast. Uh, today, I, I said to myself in my brain studio, thank God I don't have to be on camera today. <laughs> <laughs> I can wear whatever I want. Because I can... Andrew had told you very clearly, please come be on our podcast. Yeah. And, and that a, means something podcast. specific, and it doesn't mean canvas. Uh, it's, but it's confusing. If you're listening, I do want to say what I'm wearing. Uh -huh. I'm wearing this shirt that has a fox on it. And it says 1922 to 2010. I noticed that, yeah. And whenever I wear the shirt, people love to ask me if that's how long the fox lived. That's obviously <laughs> what the ob shirt is the suggesting. Impression. It's suggesting that, that this, this is an 88-year-old <laughs> fox with a death date. It, yes, yes. It has just died in 2010. No, this is, it is how long a place existed. Uh, that, my, that a cabin in the woods called Yelping Hill that my family, uh, my grandfather built a house on and we go to sometimes and this was for its oh anniversary what? oh oh good good <laughs> i thought you were gonna say until it was destroyed until, <laughs> in 2010 the place has a death date <laughs> no this shirt is just uh like 23 i mean 13 years old at this point wow i, I was so sad like three quarters away through that. i was like i was like and, then, their and then, they had, then they had to sell it someone knocked yeah. it down and built a mcmansion uh, the mean old developers from ernest goes to camp came and bulldozed <laughs> and and we all got together and rallied and we had a song and we had a benefit uh with all the kids in the town and uh at the end they said this is real life and they bulldozed anyway <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm no, feeling no. i'm feeling intimidated right now because well i'll tell you i get psyched and i feel like i'm in my comfort zone when we come here to talk about a one-hit wonder because mm -hmm. people have a lot less baggage with those artists they have a lot the listeners have a lot less at stake when we come here to talk about a song that's by a superstar like somebody that left their mark on our culture on history davy jones like Davy Jones, like Mr. <laughs> David Jones. It's the original name. I get nervous because, you know, people, the listeners bring in their own thing mm -hmm. to this episode. And, you know, this is one of those episodes. So I'm not going to say that I'm not nervous. You're nervous. Yeah. I'm a nervous young American. Let's punch <laughs> it. <laughs> Sure, sure. We can talk during the yeah, you can talk. Oh, yeah, you, I, <laughs> just try and take it off your cues. Yeah. <laughs> Anything's in bounds. I have so many opinions about it. But David we don't Bowie. know what to do. I mean, this is our no, first video is... episode. What, are, what, what do you do during the theme song? I don't know. I, I, I thought, well, okay, I've listened to podcasts and I always assumed that the theme song was added in post. So that was interesting that it was it just happened. It's, it's live <laughs> it's here because it's a live baby. music podcast. <laughs> it's on the soundboard. Can I say things about Bowie, or would you like me to wait? Oh, we want to say things about Bowie. That's say what things this about Bowie. Say, start <laughs> say saying things. Say whatever you want to say. I was worried you were going to suggest a signature dance for our theme song, is what you were about oh, to do. Oh, no, no, no. But no, you're no, ready no. to jump in. I'm re I, I like, I don't know, I just, you already said it, and I was thinking, and I have so many thoughts about David. Um, namely, you're saying he's a... He's not a one-hit wonder. He has such a discography. Are you going to say he is a one-hit wonder? No, 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 be no, the hottest no. Take. This, this is, is the, the hottest, hottest take. take I've ever... I the, can't believe Julian the, came in here I to say I can't believe that Julian said David wow. Bowie's a one-hit wonder. <laughs> it's just sound and vision. Put it in <laughs> the rolling... It. The only good put one. it in the Rolling Stone <laughs> clickbait title. David Bowie, one -hit a one-hit wonder. wonder? Julian only likes the David Bowie songs about space? Wholesome <laughs> Man Sucks? Wholesome Man Sucks. <laughs> no, I think he has... So so much bad music 
There's so many, so many. So I, oh, when I was in college, I, th I wanted to listen to every this Bowie is, song. This is a hot take. This is a good take, you. yeah. That's very brave. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, no. I think the majority of his music is unlistenable. Hmm. <laughs> <Someone> <laughs> so that's beyond like he has a couple bad songs. You're into like, if you were to just like to spin a roulette wheel of David Bowie's music. Odds are it's a, odds are it's a turd. It's a shitty song, yeah. Huh. He, he did make a lot of songs. You put enough stuff yeah. out there, you know, yeah. every once in a while you get a star man. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. So he's making music like he's not, like the Rolling Stones are making music for 10 years and then they're touring on that for an additional 50. He's always doing He's like, all right, it's 2007. Here's my new <laughs> David Bowie album. It's like, I haven't heard of that album. Most people have not, but it exists. He did the first digital only release of an album. Ah, I Bravo. believe, I believe the, that to be true. The anti-Prince. He, Bowie, what he did, which was so beautiful, was he constantly was trying to make new stuff and stay relevant. <clears throat> and then this is also, I do want to say only my, only my opinion. It is not law or fact. What? I want to say that now. You dare come on this podcast and share your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I only like maybe the first several years of his work. Yeah, I was, I was listening through some of it earlier today. Because uh, this this is one of his first like Big. top twenty five mm -hmm. hits. This is one of his, he uh, but I was shocked to realize that all of his biggest hits were in the eighties. Yeah, and all like in the eighties, like at that point, he's approaching forty in his forties, and that's when he has hit with Just Under Dance. Pressure with yeah. Queen. He has Just Dance. Mm -hmm. He has the really bad cover, in my opinion. Of Martha and the Vandellas dancing in the street. Oh, with mm. Mick Jagger. That's the best music video ever made. Which is like <laughs> they're just trying to kiss the whole time, but they can't. <laughs> you just, Every... I just, God. the dancing is really wild, and I just had to scroll through the comments until I saw the comment that I so desperately needed, which is. These are the moves like Jagger. <laughs> like this is what this is what Adam Levine is aspiring to. These dance moves. It's just swinging and snapping. That's it. Yeah. I think I've seen a shreds video of it. I think there's a shreds video out there of just like them shuffling, shuffling their feet, feet and snapping. It just sounds incredibly weird. Their dance moves that. are very strange. They're wearing these very billowy shirts. I do not like Family Guy. I don't. I watched. Uh, listen, I'll, I'll I'll connect the dots. Okay. But I watched a lot in middle school. Okay. And <clears throat> there's a part in it where Peter Griffin goes, just watch this video and plays that whole music video. And it's <laughs> Did they animate it? Or <laughs> no, is it no, no, like... no, no, no. He just says, You gotta watch this video. And then it's just that whole music video. Not animated. Not it's animated. Just... <laughs> and when I was a kid, I thought that was the funniest thing literally ever. That's I would show funny. it to everyone. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, That's they're not funny. they're not wrong. Just watch this one piece of media. It's a really strange video. But Bowie, like, and then he has these weird breakout hit moments. Like, like his work, you know, I've read a lot of, like, uh, ranker, like, ranking Bowie's albums articles. Because there's so many. you got to so rank many. Because you want to see where all the songs you hate are. Exactly. You're like, you need the turds making I want to see this. <laughs> but one of my favorite Bowie songs, Zeros, is on everyone's least favorite album, Glass Spiders. Hmm. Mm. Or do people accept that it is a good song on a bad album? No. People are just like, that song sucks. It's and so you think good. they're wrong. It's so beautiful because it, it sounds like it's old music. Hmm. And then, wow, I, I'm just realizing I know a lot about Bowie right now. That's why we had you. I know, I didn't know. And that's why I must interrupt ourselves. Please, we were please, so please. excited to talk about Bowie because we knew we had you on as Bowie fan and expert that we failed to even properly welcome you into the show. Listeners of Punch Up The Jam, welcome to the show, Julian Shapiro Barnum. Hey. The host of Recess Therapy. What? Yeah. We have a welcome then, song for you. This is, this is our first, I would say, intentional collaboration, but we've had an unintentional mm -hmm. collaboration before with the song It's Corn. This is like, I, this like we've been working together for a little bit now. It's kind of yeah. funny that we've never met before. Yeah, today's the first time we ever met. We've emailed a lot. We've yeah. talked on the phone. Text it. In Instagram, that weird thing where you do Instagram messaging and who texting at the same time. the you Gregory know? Brothers Instagram? Sadly, it's all of us. It's all of us. Because I yeah. never know who I'm talking to. Yeah. <laughs> Neither exactly. do we. It's pretty clumsy. Do you um have its corn on the soundboard? No. 
Uh, yeah, I could put it on the soundboard. Uh, give me a minute. So people know. Yeah, people yeah. might not know about It's Corn. It's possible. I doubt it. But Julian... <laughs> he, Julian... What do you tell say? Us about, you tell, interview, us, yeah, yeah. Julian tell us interview about young recess man. therapy. For, tell us about recess therapy, the yeah. show, if people don't know about it. Because our main goal here is to drive people to go watch your incredibly funny and wholesome and life changing yeah. content. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Julian Sprobarnum. I am the host of host and creator of the Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. You know the media, yeah. the digital show Recess Therapy, which is a kids interview show. Uh, that I started when I was in college. I go out on the town with my crew, Charlotte Weinman and Julia Ty Goldberg, and we, uh, with jovial spirit, approach parents, and I go, <laughs> hey, folks, we're interviewing kids today for a children's show called Recess Therapy. Could we talk to this kid? Uh, could, we talk- <laughs> could we talk to that kid? Could we talk to them about X? And yeah, I've been doing it for a year and a half, and it, it's done, it's gone well. Let me it's, it's <laughs> blown up. It's huge. Let yeah. me toot your own horn for you because w- what's going on in the show Recess Therapy is that you are a gifted and generous interviewer of oh, children. Thank you. You get on their level. You talk to them about what they want to talk about. You understand what they're sharing, and the result is like genuine gems of comedy and yeah. also wisdom from the youths mm-hmm. of today. Hmm. I was recently because of of the success of It's Corn. Mm-hmm. You interviewed this uh, amazingly uh, optimistic and wholesome child, Tariq, Mm -hmm. about his love for corn. Mm -hmm. We've been getting a lot of submissions. A lot of our fan, like a lot of our work is like, we see it through fan submission. You know, people Mm -hmm. sent us your corn interview to to do. I've been getting a lot of submissions in the last week of interviews with kids. And I watched one a couple days ago where I was just like, well, Maybe this work if Julian would be doing the interview. Because <laughs> it was very like, it was just very like it was very like suited news interviewer who was I've just like that. every question he was asking was like a leading question for the kid. It's like, well, we're not really gonna hear the kid's opinion. Is like, it where he says, I'm gonna die today? No. <laughs> oh, that's a, I, anytime anyone else speaks to a child, uh, I get it sent to me. Yeah. Uh and there was a very funny I'll send it to you later. But yeah, I really try to like I, you know. I was doing on the street interview stuff for years, not that many years. I'm not very old, but I was doing a lot of interview stuff and I was interviewing a lot of adults and I was having a lot of negative experiences with them, which is people saying things that I thought were kind of messed up and like, just like (laughs) for the camera. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I set out to film a video where I interviewed elderly people about something a little bit provocative and I got yelled at. And I did a 180, and I went and I started talking to kids. Started asking kids provocative, Provo- questions. very provocative <laughs> questions, very <laughs> messed up questions. <laughs> but I, you know, I've been working with kids my whole life, and I, in some capacity or another, and uh, it just comes very naturally to me. I, I really like it's talking to them. Yeah, it's a great show. And I think when they feel comfortable and when they feel like, I don't think they're asked what they think by a stranger a lot of the time. Most no, it's children. true. Yeah. No, yeah. they, they do get a lot of yes or no questions yeah. or telling them, here's what you're supposed to be doing right yeah. now. Here, go do this. And I think kids, when they're like given a mic and a camera and like three young adults who are like, we really want to hear what you have to say, they spill and are very generous. And uh, it's often very sweet and funny. <laughs> <laughs> they spill. <laughs> TMZ would have a field day with them. They dumped the hot goss yeah, on their parents. Tariq hot. dumped the hot goss. He on spilled corn. on corn. He spilled the yeah. tea on corn. That now, is you, good. Now, I will I did say, pull having, the song. We're gonna listen. Yeah, that's cool. Having, having listened to it's corn know this. as often as I have now, yeah. mm-hmm. to editing the video, you know, working on the song, watching the interview a lot. Do you feel like there's a possibility that what Tariq is more inter- interested in corn? Is really the butter. He seems like, well, we've talked about this a little, is that he didn't like corn until it had butter. Yeah. No one's talking about that. I, <laughs> yeah. I want to say, no one is talking about it's, that. I mean, it's, it feels like, like th- the there's an opportunity, like the corn industry is moving in and working to make Tariq his, the, its spokesman. He's mm-hmm. done an ad for Chipotle. He went to the Corn Palace in South Dakota. If him. I worked for Big Butter, 
If I That's was if story. I was a dairy farmer in Minneapolis and I was ahead of Dairy Farmers of America, I'd be trying to swoop in and be like, "It's not the corn that tastes good, guys. It's." It's the butter, and also the butter is what makes the salt and pepper adhere to the corn. I don't know. I'm here for I'm here for both, man, because yeah. the butter, butter and itself. the salt are the taste revealers of the culinary mm. world. Do you like dry toast with nothing on it? No, you don't. But buttery toast, it works. It's such mm. a pure food. Butter is like that pure fat that you can put on any food and render it delicious. I, I will say, just because I think it's important, Tariq likes other foods. Um, he's really into broccoli. Great. He really likes dumplings. Okay. He likes fruit. I just like, that's not out there. That's not information that's been in an interview. That's just of our private conversations between before and after the interview. It's important because yeah. he's a well-rounded I mean, guy with real taste. He's not he just has, a meme. I'm he's not a guy. It looked like you guys were at a, a food festival when yeah, you did he, the interview. And he had eaten just before. Okay. The second time, so, he, he came back, and I was like, Tariq, buddy, I, whatever you want, I'll buy it for you. And he was like, I just had lunch. And I was like, that, I was like, do you even want corn? And he's like, not and it, not so much. Yeah, and then full. we brought it out, and he couldn't help himself. But, yeah. you know, he yeah, set himself the, up for that. But the man's at a, at a food festival. He's there He's there for the dumpling. He's there for the broccoli. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what what made you, of all songs in the world, no, I mean, this, and we'll talk yeah. about this a little bit later, this wasn't the first song you picked because we straight up vetoed maybe as many as five songs that you sent. <laughs> well, you said I said the any instructions song, were very any song. clear. Said, any any song, song, and you sent me five songs, and then I said No. I talked to Evan and we said we think Hard we need no. more fame. We need we need songs <laughs> that are more famous than this. I well, I was like, let me be interesting. I was like, let me pick songs that I love that maybe people don't know. Mm-hmm. So I was try- like Sure. You're trying to impress yeah. a first date with your playlist is what yeah, you're trying to do. Yeah, I was trying to, like, trying to make a mixtape for us. Evan and I said, yeah. we live, we're working in the attention economy. Yeah. You need, we're making our living with clicks. You gotta, we gotta get yeah. some clicks. Yeah. You don't need to flirt with us with your indie rock. Yeah. No. We need you to go broad, big. I went to Bowie and I went to specifically Young American um, because I love that song. Okay. I have listened to it so many times. And uh, it, durational listening leads to opinions, and I and if this is an op- a podcast about wow. opinions on music, I have it opinions. Oh, uh, say that. Let's clip that out. That's that's that could be a motto of the show. Yeah. <laughs> durational listening leads to opinions. Put that on my epitaph. <laughs> Merch. Um, before le- I really want to get into the lyrics, like all, all we really need to talk about is how many nuts lyrics are in this song but Andrew could you just give us like a little bit of context for what is going on w- in Bowie's career when he comes to record this thing so when people think Bowie they think about a man who lived in phases mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right the many phases of Bowie many yeah. phases of Bowie right yeah. and just to name a few to name a yeah uh, d- uh, please d- uh, the Ziggy you got Stardust working, yeah, Ziggy working Stardust. class young Bowie yeah, yeah. then Ziggy then uh, what is his pre Bowie David thin, Jones? Then he goes to the Thin White Dude. The Thin White is Duke. that after that? Is that the Thin? This is in a a, a brief period. Yeah, between Ziggy Stardust, uh-huh. where where like he has the lightning painted on his yeah. face, and mm-hmm. he is wearing the costumes, and his backing band is called like the the Spiders from Spiders Mars. Mars. Yes, and then he the next album he starts going into the Thin White Duke, but then he starts doing these like big big pants and the little little button up in the little little tie outfits yeah but this is like the uh, this <laughs> album which is also called young americans is is like this one album between the thin white duke and uh ziggy stardust mm-hmm. where he he calls it his plastic soul ah, phase. plastic did soul. you know this his plastic this soul phase i looked it up okay I looked so it up. now you know it he he calls it his plastic soul phase and he there's a there's a a great quote he said Plastic Soul is the squashed remains wow. of ethnic music Weird. as it survives in the age of music, written and sung by a white limey. <laughs> so he's like, okay. tra- he's like, wow. he's trying to embrace yeah. rock. Uh-huh. He's, he like in his whole career is always um, very honest about rock and roll being like having it, its roots in black America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's that amazing interview he does in the 80s. Have you guys seen this interview? No. Uh, he, he, he did an interview in the early 80s with MTV 
where like in this interview that's supposed to be a softball interview, he basically starts asking the interviewer like, so why are you guys not putting any black mm. people's music on MTV? What? It's an awesome interview. And the guy's like, oh, uh, well, we, we are sometimes. <laughs> and Bowie's like, well, I watch MTV a lot. And usually you're putting on like the black musicians around like two, three in the morning. And the guy's like, well, we, we, <laughs> the guy's like trying to make it better. But he says something insane, which is like, well, we have to interest all of America, not just the people who live in cities, but also the people who live in P Poughkeepsie and yeah, Peoria. He had to do, yeah. he was on the spot and he had to do the soft racism of like an executive yeah, yeah. appealing yeah, but to But Dave Bowie is not, not letting well, the guy have Well, Bowie's, for him, what a legend. Yeah. Not to go like too down this rabbit hole, but like Bowie's uh, politics in his music are so interesting because he, he, I think he feels... Uh, like he can get away with a little bit more than I think he should feel. He says a lot of kind of whack stuff in his music. He says some whack stuff in this song. Yes. We'll get to it. But like China Girl, also not a song. That's a Iggy Pop song that he covers. Mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but he also did a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. He's a controversial character. He slept with a 16-year-old. And then the 16-year-old was like, no, 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 no. It was awesome. And he got off the hook. She was like, this was really cool and I wanted it really bad. Did she say that, that on the stand? She, yes. <laughs> well, no, he like, she like testified. I don't think it got to court or anything, but like he always does stuff and he always, he always comes out on top. Yeah. And he lived atop an REI. Yeah. So yeah. like his, his don't whole thing. Don't take that as an endorsement. No, 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 So his whole thing about like, <laughs> about like ethnic music and the age of music, but sung by a white limey. It's like, it's this very like cerebral take on it, but it's like, is it really that different than like the Rolling Stones yeah, doing, doing the blues or like or like Lennon, John Lennon actually was on this album. He co-wrote the big hit on it, Fame. He and wrote he played, Fame with him? Yeah. And then he uh they covered across the universe on this album and John Lennon that played guitar on it. Because they were just like because they were just acquaintances basically that mm -hmm. became friends working on this album. And John Lennon had a much simpler way of talking about it, which is he said that this album was great. But just rock and roll with lipstick. <laughs> it's like that's very Lennon. Oh, it is. It is very John Lennon. You got right to the heart of it. Yeah, way more to the heart of it than just sort of being like ethnic music, but in the age of music, but sung by a white line. <laughs> David Bowie comes off yeah. sounding like an anthropologist. Yeah, but he's not wrong though. But David Bowie really wanted to like, as he, you know, in his mind, he's like, I'm gonna go to America and I'm gonna make a rock and roll album in the tradition of like the the rock and roll pioneers who were black. He goes to uh, Gamble and Huff studio mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, which is, I don't know, honestly to me, kind of an odd choice because like, it, I, why not go to Detroit? Why not go to Memphis? Why not go yeah. to Stack Studio or Motown? But he goes to Gamble and Huff. It's closer. That I think of as like a very far third place <laughs> studio. It's like, do you want to be at the studio where they did uh, like Aretha Franklin or the studio where they did Teddy Pendergrass. And Teddy Pendergrass <laughs> hasn't even happened yet. Wow. Anyway, he goes to Philadelphia and he Dragging does have- Dragging Pendergrass on my show. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> but he, uh, but I, I, mean, I love Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy Pendergrass is awesome. Sure, but he's... what are, just backtracking it, just oh. walking it back so, as fast as you can. So Name are you telling songs. me you like Teddy Pendergrass <laughs> more than you like Aretha Franklin? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> no, <I'm doing> <laughs> he, Tony me going. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he did have an amazing band for this. He had um, Sly and the Family Stones drummer on it. He and he is kind of funky because he went because he wanted the Philadelphia That's house band, drummer. but then they weren't available, so he hired all these other guys. Uh, he had the Isley Brothers bass player on it. Wow, uh, That's just smart. which is great. Um, but. Um, I don't know. That's the background. Is that the background you're looking for, Evan? Absolutely. I think. It, we need to let David Bowie's politics speak for themselves by playing the song. The I have the single version, otherwise we'd be here all day talking about eight verses, but I want to get into playing the song, which just immediately puts you in a spot. It oh, sounds the, funky. The opening... That yeah. little glissando coming down. Oh, that's so good. <clears throat> Amazing backing band. Like, they're just... The, the skills are on display here. It sounds tight. The saxophone is being played by David Sanborn legendary alto sax player from American music scene and this is like early in his career before he hit it big okay so now we're getting into lyrics oh I have so much to say about this first verse 
I was just gonna uh, I'll just pause. We gotta we gotta bite this off. Like, I think it's a I've story. Heard this, I've, I've heard this song a lot. I've heard this song a, a, a lot, and you you just accept it as a happy song celebrating young Americans being carefree. I don't it, know. And then this, it would fit in with a lot of pop music, but it ain't that. This first verse is about a a bad hookup uh, that happens way too fast uh, that begets a child, and I listened to. I never, it, it took me looking up is what it, was. Is it a bad hookup or is it a bad marriage proposal? Oh, is that what you think? <laughs> they is? pulled right. in just behind, behind the bridge. He lays her down. He frowns. He's hesitating here. Yeah. Gee, my life's a funny thing. Am I still too young? What does that mean? Am I still too young? I to have to a get child. Married. I think to, to get married. I, look, he, ki- I, he kissed her then and there. I get, okay, okay. She took okay, his she ring. Took his ring. Mm-hmm. She took his ring. So I, she said to the proposal, here's that, that line. Kissed her then and there. Okay, great. Took his, baby. took his babies. Now, as far as I can tell, that's just sperm. Like they had sex. He yeah. he, he proposed. She accepted, and they decided to consummate the proposal and, right there behind the bridge. And it took him minutes. Yep. Took her nowhere. Yep. Yeah, we that's can, what I'm talking huge about. Huge burn. We everyone can identify with. Yeah. You know, the man One is getting the his rocks off where she is like, wait, what about me over here? Just waving her hand. Mm-hmm. Hello? Mm-hmm. Hello, what about me? <laughs> Do you have, is this a, something you feel? Yeah, this is a personal story. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> um, I, I just like, think it's a funny way to lead in. I like this song. This is a good song. But I think it's absolutely unhinged that David Bowie, like, does this sound like uh, an American rock song, sort of. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. But the lyric writing to me is so detached from any sort of traditional American rock and roll lyric writing. Like, it, it, there's yes. no rhymes in here. Yes, this is, a, no this is a hot take. This is a hot <laughs> take. Like, Fire. That is absolutely wild to me that David Bowie was like, I'm going to go to America and I'm going to make an album that is, his words, not mine, an ethnic album it's like <laughs> what historical rock and roll song sounds like this lyrically and my opinion is none of them no and I, I don't know maybe if you if maybe if i spoke to david bowie in depth which i'll never do he would say well like well of course i was going for the sound but i needed my mm-hmm. hot david yeah, bowie takes and he it. wanted to write his his poetry this sounds like new age poetry yeah. there are no rhymes in There's this no first in verse it. you just it's, accept it and it's about like working class america in this, in my opinion, like really white way, that when I took, I, as I like read the lyrics of this, and I was like, this is like, this is one of those America songs that people are like, yeah, America, because they hear America in the song, and then you read the lyrics, and you're like, this is about how depressing America yeah. is. Like Jack and Diane or something? Like Jack and Diane, yes. or like, um, it's like a John Cougar, Cougar Mellencamp, like Jack and Diane, yeah. or like Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. Sure. It's very like, reality is hard. Yeah, but then I was reading more about the album. And he literally recorded a Springsteen song on this album, and they cut it. <gasps> really? And it's just bizarre to me that that David Bowie's like, I must go to America and make a his words, not mine, <laughs> ethnic <laughs> album. <laughs> and then he was like, I'll record a song by this American rock and roller, Bruce Springsteen, who just did Born <laughs> in the USA. So, are you saying Young Americans is a watered down Born like, in the USA? It even like, has do, Americans do in the USA cut, in the title. So the, this is extremely hot taking. So the song he covered was "It's Hard to Be a Saint in the City" uh-huh. off Greetings from Asbury Park. Like, do you cut? Do you cut that Bruce Springsteen song because you realize, like, well, this one's kind of my well, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce you don't want to. You don't want to give it you, away. You don't have the yeah. inspiration, the song that inspired I'm Young Americans right by it. But it's like, Don't show it's just hand. really strange to me that, if anything, this reminds me of a Springsteen song. Even the saxophone! It's, it's like a Clarence Clemens thing. You're Except right. Except David Sanborn's a lot better at playing the saxophone. You're right. I was going to say, like, if you'd never heard this song before and the track started, the rhythm section is in, the sax is blowing on the intro, that what I expect would be, like, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch with a lot of, like, really square rhymes just giving you a Motown love song. Yeah. But you're right that the saxophone is actually... It's very, it's very E Street Band, Clarence Clemens. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that is very funny to me that he's like insistent that this is all uh, like a homage to the history of black music in America. He's very outspoken about that into the 80s and 90s. 
but it and seems like yeah, it just seems like class. a Bruce Springsteen song. Yeah, to me. <laughs> white America. <laughs> until until he says the buzzwords at the end, but we'll get to those. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're into the first chorus here. Heaven knows she'd have taken anything, but she wants a young American. Is he not the guy? Yeah, the the, the dude in the story. I feel like is a is the young American a man who can last a long time in bed? I think it's like she <laughs> she's tricking herself into thinking that he is the young American she wants, right? Like he is a young American, mm-hmm. but he isn't at the same time. But she's like, this he's a young American, right? Yeah, this will work, right? That's that's the way I read the song. Uh, so, just clearing one thing up: is she American? I don't know. She is, right? Isn't this a story wow. about like two young Americans getting together, just, just living the typical American you just life? Blew open the case. I just hear this. I bridge. hear this as like Bowie saying, like, this is what young Americans. This is a typical American story. Yeah, they got pregnant young. Brenda and Eddie were the popular steady, and the kings and the queens of the prom. <laughs> I love that. Do you know De Tocqueville? <laughs> yes, Alexis. I've, I, yes. Not personally. <laughs> Tio, really? We've never met. He's a bad guy, but this feels like. A, a de Tocquevillian uh, <laughs> read of America for our. Yeah. Uh, I've been to America, and this is what I've seen. <laughs> Meaning, they, they we're talking about in. the French surveyor <laughs> yes. of colonial American yes. culture. That's what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> Bowie yes. is the modern. Bowie is the modern colonial coming over here anthropologically. He's writing the Audubon Society book on Americans, and this is what he sees. Um, that's what de Tocqueville did. He yeah. he just it was first impressions only. He'd yeah. Written down his facts. And it's like David Bowie is traveling America, <laughs> like basically seeing like hotels mm-hmm. and restaurants mm-hmm. as he's already famous. He's on tour and he's peeping. Yeah, and on young and, couples. Yeah, and he like, mm-hmm. but it, how how does David Bowie know what normal America is? He's 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 you know going to Gamble and Huff Studio. He's hanging out with John Lennon at the at at a, at a Electric Lady Studio in New York City. Have what's, you seen? What's he know about young? Yeah, Americans? that's why he had to start watching all that MTV. To learn yeah, about he's it. like, yeah. About America, he's like, I met yeah. this great young American. His name is John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows everything about New York. <laughs> he's got. He must be from the South. <laughs> Have you seen that? Um, just an example of Bowie being so not a normal person who cannot live a normal person life. Have you seen him and Peter Frampton in Madrid? No. No. Oh my God. Homework. Bowie and Frampton went to Madrid, I think, for an MTV piece. Okay. It's just them trying to get a beer. And they're, like, in Seoul and, like, just walking around. And Bowie's, like, making jokes. And they just get swarmed. Swarmed by By Spaniards. Yeah. And no one goes up to Peter Frampton. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> like he like oh. gets pushed to the side. Oh, man. Um but yeah, I don't I don't think he knows I don't think he knows what it means to be a young American by any means. Yeah, he's yeah. making it up. Okay, now, I need a lot of help deciphering the second verse. So yeah, amazing background vocal, I will say, Evan. Yeah. And the amazing background vocal leads us to your least favorite segment on the show. Oh no. Then you get five uh this is Evan's least favorite segment on the show, Julian, and it is Tell me. If he can answer this trivia question about the song "Young Americans," or it could be about David Bowie's life, I try to, I try to, I try to keep them gettable. I try to keep them in the pocket. I will Venmo Evan five dollars. Wow! However, in this, in this I case, your this. guest, you're, you're, can you're, I steal? you can steal. Yeah, maybe can have a you have an opportunity to steal. He's not a lifeline. He's a he could. He's my he's, competitor. He's your competitor. Oh. Um, and I always, I lose these every the time. Question Jay. is, in a really bad mood. Uh, this. You know, we've talked about this is recorded in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a, as of, uh, this is an additional clue in when the, was this recorded? I think 74. In 74, he's an unknown mm-hmm. who sings and arranged the background vocals. A man. A man who became a superstar. Who is that man? And I'll, I, I will say it's not Teddy Pendergrass. Not Teddy Pender. That was my guess. Yeah. You can play it back. See if you can. Yeah, let's, let's hear his it. voice. Let's hear his voice. <clears throat> it's like David Burns. Like, Rolling it back all for night. that. All night. Well, I mean, it's not just one guy. Yeah. You clued me in that it's a man. Oh, oh, you can hear that it's not just a man's voice here. All night. But she wants a young 
Okay, we're going to the second verse here. Okay, let me... Uh, okay. Uh, I have, an, let's I have that, an educated... Let's let that ride. We can let it ride. I have an educated guess because of the generous clues that you've okay. given me. Really? And the sound of the vocal. And my guess is Luther Vandross. You got it! Wow. That's yes! $5. Yes! That's $5. Yes! I mean, riding that high all day. And it's going to counteract the skull injury well, I just I know, gave I just... myself by leaning back on that bookshelf. Okay. It's wow. a, for the first time, it's a visual medium. Oh. And you'll know I'm not kidding around when I say that I will Venmo Evan $5. Oh, it feels good. You're the man now, dog. Um, I don't know who that man is. Who? Luther Vandross. Luther Vandross. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Ooh, well, if you want to cry, if you're looking for a song if you're looking that'll for make homework. you cry mm -hmm. tonight, I, we'll get to I, that later in the David Bowie song. Listen to Dance With My Father by Luther Vandross. I will. Ooh. I will. Ooh. I'm having a small get-together tonight, Ooh. and I'll yeah. put it on. Ooh, Hall, just uh, love, love, yeah, Hall of Fame R&B singer. Dance with my father. We don't need to get... This is not Luther Vandross's episode. We'll put a pin in that for a Luther Vandross yeah. song. I'm going to have to change my walk-in song. Some later date. Uh, yeah, okay, you got, and we don't need to make Julian out to be a noob. We'll just edit this right out. No, I, I know things that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, you ain't a pimp. You ain't a hustler. <laughs> you ain't a pimp. You ain't a... <laughs> a pimp's got a caddy and a lady got a Chrysler. Wow. So we'll get to that. Yep. <laughs> that is so crazy. <clears throat> so we're at All the Way from Washington. Yeah, All the Way from Washington. Here we go. Red winner. Begs off the best. What? We, he finally rhymed. He managed to get bathroom floor, floor and more. 50 more. That's maybe like the first. This is an accident. It's not <laughs> one, he one rhyme. It's not, not a rhyme he scheme. Made. He was try, he's trying to write his avant garde poetry. Yeah. He accidentally rhymed. Yeah, songs are built on rhymes. It's your built on version. Rhyme schemes. All rhyming. I, I wish we'd thought of that. I <laughs> wish we'd thought of that. I so, wish that we did sneak in a few. Rhymes. No, but honestly, as we were scrambling to get this done, we were like, this is an easy one because it's yeah. You don't have to rhyme. Yeah, you just you just fill the whole thing with garbage. Just say whatever you want. So all the way from Washington, mm -hmm. that is a place in America. Okay. Yes, great. Yeah. Unclear whether it's the state or the district. He did. I think this man, quick, quick Nick, we can call him. Okay. okay. Um, because he, of, that's quick because of his sexual yes. speed. Yeah. Talking about. Okay. No yeah. shame. Quick Nick. Sure. And. Uh, he. I think he cheated or something. Begs off. No, he's begging for forgiveness. I see. Okay, he's on his knees in the bathroom. Yeah, please. Uh, I came all the way from Washington. I came all the way from. Washington. <laughs> oh. I, I heard I no idea what the Washington has to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think wa wa Washington. I assume we're city, DC, not okay. state. I mean, I'm willing to go there with you. It's not. Uh, we Just we no, don't have any convincing uh, yeah. evidence. He could be coming from Seattle. I uh, I heard bath. I mean, your read or is he working? Great, great read. Bathrooms. I assumed being on the bathroom floor had to do with barfing, just because oh. David Bowie was hugely addicted to cocaine for most of the 1970s, including these recording sessions. Mm. So I just assumed he was drawing from his personal life experience uh -huh. of overdosing and yeah. being addicted. His to His primary relationship with the bathroom floor. Yes, is, is coke or passing out there, which is yes. very up and you young American it. experience. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> maybe, but maybe, but maybe, maybe you're right, and he's just a janitor. Could I don't know. Just be mm -hmm. a janitor, which would be another reason that uh, I don't know who Quick Nick's companion is. Uh, you know, uh, well, janitor is a very like Springsteenian occupation. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, Quick Nick could definitely be a, yeah. a school custodian. What's but, his wife's name? Yeah, but Vivian, Viv. Yeah, but something that that Viv could perhaps be disappointed in her husband for becoming, you know, at eighteen when they were in the car, she thought you know, he'd promised more. that he was going to go to college, and now he's on the bathroom floor. Uh, the bathroom floor also, like, you know, makes me think of like working on the the factory floor, but he works on the bathroom. Mm -hmm. floor. Well, it could be a, <laughs> it could be a factory where they build bathrooms. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like seventies. <laughs> Prefab appliances. The bathroom floor. Yeah. Prefab bathrooms. Yeah. And then I'm just taking the lead on this one, but you know, you jump in anytime, but they've been together for 20 years and he doesn't, he, he, 
is afraid to live any longer. I have different take, which is that they're only twenty years old. Oh, and they only see the I value. Understand. They only see the value in being young. Like everything is about they're, being young. Your whole life is already going downhill at age <laughs> 20. twenty. Right? They're like, oh god, we've been married for two years. Do we, we have to phone over? this in for another fifty years? We're gonna die to each other. You know, like I'll, the whole point of life yeah. is to be young and do fun things. But just, now that's all in the just, past. We got fifty years of shit. to me that this was his first like <laughs> breakout hit in America. People were like. He that's wrote a us. song about America! And that's what's so twisted and funny about it is that it sounds so sunny. Just like Jack and Diane. The beat rocks, the rhythm section is fly. So, And the backup singers are doing a ton of work here. Every time it hits the chorus, everybody in the bar is putting their hands up. All yeah. night! I think you could great. listen to this song and only hear the word American and America and the which is pretty much the chorus and kind of like just I'm vibe a young for the American. Rap. Yeah, yeah. You just vibe on being a young American. You don't listen to the verses man, 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 at all. In fact, man, I, can, I need to get back in my spot here. I need to get back. I'm getting mad just thinking about the the verses. Yeah. But this one, woo! Those unison. Oh, yeah. Young American just gets the energy going. It's tight. He okay, wants we go to the get, we're, we're about to get to a bridge here. Turn it over to Sanborn for about four bars here. Just let this man blow. Listen to this. Unreal. I, lo I love this line. Do you remember Consider a punch-up that's all sax solo. Your President Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to pause for Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> that's like he's talking to the American people. Yeah. I like. Yeah. He like. Yes, he like. You're absolutely right. He's he started finger wagging there. He's looking directly <laughs> he's at every zoomed, American. He zoomed Do out you from being like us. Or the rest <laughs> of the song, he's like us Americans, and all yeah. of a sudden he's like Richard Nixon. <laughs> he couldn't help <laughs> it. Me. He couldn't help it. He wanted to go Springsteen and just talk about Little Billy and Sally Mae and how they got preggy too early, and oh, what a hardship for the working class. And all of a sudden, he was like, you know what? Your president Nixon. Yeah. Well, you can wag your finger all you want at us, David Bowie. It takes but a dark turn. In, in, in a couple years, you're gonna, you, you know, look in the mirror. You're gonna have Margaret Thatcher. How are you gonna <sighs> feel about that, David wow. Bowie? I think if you ever adopt a persona called the Thin White Duke, yeah, mm. maybe, maybe you're kind of like setting yourself up for some major no nos. Seems like you know, like little eugenesis. Yeah, sounds like you're yeah. maybe eugenesis, and maybe the next thing you know, you're telling the press in an interview that Britain would benefit from a fascist leader. <sighs> don't want don't to don't want to say that. That opinion's I wrong. I think the thin white duke would be a good nickname for Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a Margaret, like Margaret Thatcher's, like. Secret assassin or something like that like Margaret Thatcher the like thin sending the thin white duke. duke. She's like send the Sounds thin like white a, duke to East Berlin. It sounds like a um, uh, James Bond movie. Yeah. Yes. It sounds like the bad guy in James Bond. Movie. And, thin and, white duke. And That's he like should have like opening. he should have played the character too. Yeah. I mean, he was. I mean, yeah. Just put him in the same getup as Labyrinth. Just see how that works. In a wasn't the duke oh like one of John Wayne's nicknames? Wasn't it John? Was. Yes. John Wayne was the Duke, right? I I thought Thin White Duke was maybe drawn from that culture because David Bowie took his own pseudonym mm. from Jim America. Bowie, the famous yeah. Alano, Alamo hero and famous person stabber. Wow. Right, right, Yeah, just famous for stabbing. So you know David Bowie loves cowboy yeah. stuff. Love and Ziggy Western, Stardust Western was stuff. taken from an American guy. There's like an outsider musician really? guy who had Stardust in his name and he, he, he cribbed that from him. Mm. Uh, so he does love young Americans. He loves like Jim Americans. Bowie, the famous stabber. But the Thin White Duke ended up like basically it was while he was the Thin White Duke in the late seventies that he kind of started getting fascist, like literally. And then Actu he ended actually? up, yeah, he Bowie? well, he told people that Britain should have a fascist leader. Oh, he did. I didn't he, know. Oh, I yeah, that was a joke. yeah, no, oh. that's real. But but he basically blamed it in the end on two things. First of all, he was like, well, I'm addicted to cocaine. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. And he also blamed it on the city of Los Angeles. Wow. I think basically for providing him mm. with the cocaine. Yeah. Then what is he and Listen, there's blaming no one... us for Nixon? Nixon was- Exactly. We tried our best. Yeah. So he, he, he left Los Angeles. I tried my best. He moved back to Europe and he said something. This is an amazing thing to say when you're leaving mm -hmm. the mindset of being a fascist. He said that Los Angeles should be, he said, the fucking place should be wiped off the face of the earth. Wow. Wow, that's cold. That's like, it's mm, very I don't, nope. I don't know if you've left the fascist mindset yet. 
if you're saying Los Angeles should be wiped yeah. up. He's history. at least lobbying to become an honorary New Yorker with that kind of attitude. But <laughs> yeah. so he was the first person to say, uh, fun, have, fun hell, what is that? Horrible quote about New York and LA. New York is fun hell, and, and Los Angeles should be fucking wiped off the face of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Los Angeles is hella fun. No, it's like, it's like, I think, new, yeah, fun hell and like burning heaven or something. Shitty heaven, right? Thank you. Oh, I needed that. Sure I was desperately heaven. needing help. That's a good, okay, that's Shitty a good Shitty heaven and fun hell. But you know, I'm rising above this beef. There's so much hate in this world. We have to rise above. I did want to say that like, who among us has not done cocaine and then felt a little fascist? It's one of the side effects. <laughs> Especially you feel with a little bit stuff. like you really want to That's strong why you have authority. to get tested. Guys, don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Don't, don't do get drugs. addicted to cocaine. Yeah. Or the next thing you know, you're going to be telling be the like Swedish Mussolini. press that you think Britain should have a fascist dictator. <laughs> oh, man. We really went off the grid on this bridge here. Okay. Yeah. Americans don't like being finger wagged at. And even it keeps if, it going. Even if Nixon sucks. Do you remember? Ugh, it builds I don't your, think I about hate that. This, this is like him shaming us for getting avocado toast. Back off, Bowie. It's also <laughs> wait, wait. Modulation happened. Okay, I'm pausing for the. Mod. It's also very like, what do normal people are stressed do? about? Mm, they, they're stressed about ooh, President Nixon, Nixon and bills. Bill. <laughs> people have to pay bills. That must be hard for them. Write that down. I think the other. I think the original was. Uh, do you remember to yell at your butler? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first draft. Do you yeah. remember yeah. <laughs> to park your Chevrolet yeah. for only mm -hmm. yesterday? Do you remember you got stuck in the gondola on the Thames? <laughs> ah, no, no, no. America. No one will get that. America. Back to the custodian. <laughs> What's he doing? He's a limey, channeling ethnic music in the age of music. Come on, David. David. Pull it together. David. <laughs> His words, not mine. Never yours. Um, let me spin it back just so you can hear this key change. It's so satisfying. You come right out of this bridge onto the last verse in a new in a fresh key. <laughs> you! Yeah. Yeah. Out it of up. the Tom Phil. I mean, I his need vocal a, is amazing. He sounds great. He sounds great. He's belting it out, and it's and it's he's just got so much energy in breaking his voice. You ain't a pimp. But what are these lyrics? What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Can we read we them? just heard. Yeah, re, we just heard this first this first couplet here. You ain't a pimp, and you ain't a hustler. A, this is coming out of David Bowie's mouth. A pimp's got a caddy. <laughs> what and do a lady Americans got a Chrysler. do? What do Americans do? <laughs> what is you he talking about? Is he trying pimp. to be ironic about our? Depiction about black exploitation. What is he attempting here? Oh my god, it's so it's so intense. It's so intense. It, it still <laughs> feels finger waggy here because he's saying you ain't this and you ain't yeah, there's that. All, there's also oh. this lyric about blacks got respect and whites, whites got, got his soul, soul train. train. But that's I think like it's talking about white Americans co-opting black culture. I think right. so. But he also. Is doing that. had just been on Soul Train, right? Yeah, but he was very yes. he was very proud that he was one of the first white people, maybe the first white person to appear on Soul Train. But Unabashed, the, feather but like in the as cap. an as a nerd, I don't know. This isn't like a this isn't even that nerdy of a thing. I it, I I stick on the on the metaphor. I stick on the line mm -hmm. because famously Soul Train was one of the major pieces of of media that was founded and owned by. A black person. Yeah. Like like a guy went out on a limb and like invested to make Soul Train and it was this huge mm. enormous hit. There was some I don't know, there was some like second rate streaming show about this recently on Hulu or something. Uh Hulu is first rate, Andrew, so, so help all me. I'm all I'm saying is that kudos Come to on. that man. Kudos to that man who was a black man who invented and created Soul Train and was told he would fail and instead was a huge success. So, so that leaves us with being confused about this line where it seems like it's a reference to himself being the white guy that got on Soul Train. Yeah, I guess. I, 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 know. Think, I think Julian's I right that it's yeah. about white people co-opting. You're not this, you're not this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It's also interesting that a lot of this song feels like it's speaking to white people. What is, okay, the last line in this stanza, mama's got cramps and looks look at your hands, hands ache. ache. Let me play it real quick. What is that? 
mom has got cramps and is are we talking about menstrual cramps are we back on the original pregnancy i think it's just like back cramps why why yeah she she's, threw working her back. So hard. she's working, she's working so, hard. so hard yeah i think it's like she's working. on the factory floor yeah. manufacturing bathrooms I think at this point, some of the overnight recordings, you know, yeah. sessions, some of the cocaine is starting to kick in. I think he's just, I think he's just riffing. I think he's talking. This could be a riff. I think he's riffing. I, I think, think he's making, no one can see this, but I think he's making this face the whole time. Like, like, like really like, is this right? I, th- I think this is one. <laughs> right. He's like, is this, <laughs> is this American? Does this work? <laughs> is this American? Mama's <laughs> got cramps and look at your hands. <laughs> and... <laughs> I, okay. You could be right. He's just throwing some wet paper at the wall. I, yeah. I think this is one of those situations where. We're, you know, you know, rightfully trying to put on our our mm-hmm. spectacles mm-hmm. and pour over the lyrics because it, it's our it's, job. It's our job to have opinions. Yeah. But you know, you're writing rock and roll lyrics. Maybe you're just maybe you're just singing something that that sounds good. And and Mama's yeah. got cramps and. And you're also yeah. now sounds you're in the third amazing. verse. You're and in the third verse, and maybe things are starting to unravel. We're a bit over in the third here verse. overthinking something that he improvised. Congratulations. Let's <laughs> just. I think we could just look a lot of these as just like. He had a lot of words he wanted to use, and he just found ways to put them in sentences. I think he wanted to say pimp, and he wanted 100%. to say hustler. He wanted to say cramps. Soul Train, ache. Chrysler. It's a word salad. Yeah. And, I th- and it's about to get a little worse. I th- Well, it's about to go into the reference. Yeah, here's a Beatles reference. Comes up. Let me, let me back it up. And yell it. Really... Here's a Beatles reference right here. Which sounds great there. The backup singers are singing it better than the Beatles ever I know. would or I want to hear this version of that song. I heard the news today, oh boy, from Day in the Life. So what is he saying by including this one single reference, just shoehorning in a Beatles thing into this song about America? Yeah. That and- song feels very like normal British life. And amazing that he... he- I mean, I think this whole song was recorded before he ended up, like through sheer coincidence, recording two of the songs mm-hmm. on this album with John Lennon. Okay, that's pretty amazing that he was just like, he, "Gotta put in a Beatles reference." He quoted Lennon and then met Lennon later yeah. and got him on the album. I will say, yeah. if I'm trying to draw a connection, "Day in the Life" is very much about the futility of the life of like a normal working class yeah, guy yeah, in, yeah, Britain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in Britain. Yeah, it's about the okay. young Briton. Yeah. So young he's just Briton. yeah here he's just bemoaning the life of the. The working class. He's Pimps trying to write the the American version of that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. After the Beatles reference, we get a little bit more of this word salad. I got a sweet. I can suck on the jaw. Yeah, you don't like you don't like domestic abuse or finger wagging. One damn song that can make me break down and cry. That song you referenced earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah. he's like, okay, can I sock a woman? Can I hold a child? Uh, Luther uh, Vandross child. walked. He walked away from this recording session thinking, I've got to I've write got a song, song that, that can will make, make David Bowie break down and cry. <laughs> well, Luther Vandross walked away from the session and was like, what if I sing a normal song? Song, <laughs> could be a hit. A song that wasn't about socking a woman in the jaw or holding a child. Yeah, just some basic bedroom lover stuff. Yeah, <laughs> ain't there? Well, I I don't know. I I think he's, I think he's just throwing things out there. I think he's trying to capture the the American experience with these lines. I think this this whole song makes me really think about like Manhattan. Oh, mm, okay. yeah. Tell and like, because, there's so, because there's so many bridges. And Chicago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like Chicago. It's just like, and Philly. It's like very, it's a, such a city song. It's like in no way about rural America, which yeah. I can't mm-hmm. speak to personally, but this song yeah. feels very like, or, or like San Francisco. Yeah. That's the bridge in my head, the Golden Gate Bridge. To me, it feels like yeah. it's set in a suburb that's immediately outside a major city. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. this person says like, oh yeah, I'm from Philly, but if you scratch the surface like a little deeper, they live in like media. Yeah. Wow. And they go into, Flower they, try, town. they like to go into yeah. Philly on the weekend, but like they live in they live in media. What an accusation. Yeah, and he they're like know, the you know, tough, tough blue collar guy drinking his brews at Papoose. <laughs> 
Uh, the I, I love the cutout moment where there's just like the little breakdown for for him to scream and show off his voice a little bit. Ain't that one damn song that can make me break down? It? <laughs> yeah, you should just concentrate. Just that a part. little soul ad lib. He's like, this is. Like, I can actually sing, yeah. this is my homage to, like, all the soul belters that I'm trying to emulate here. And you get to the rest of the song, he just ad-limited it out. Oh, just let the sound, backup singers great. just show off. The song sounds great. I love this song. One, one really funny thing about this recording session that I... Well, a thing I learned about the difference in recording is that this recording session really weirded Bowie out. Because when you, at the time, when he recorded in the UK... The engineer would add the reverb live. So you can hear so you, yourself. So you went back and listened to it, and you listen to your takes, and you were like, okay, this is what it's going to sound like on right, the record. So, yeah, right, so, and wow. in the United States at the time, the standard was what it still is, which is like you record yourself clean, and then you add the reverb later, and you can yeah, add, yeah. you can change the amount of reverb. Mm-hmm. So it, like, it freaked David Bowie out to like listen back to his clean vocals. Like He hadn't heard his clean vocals on an album in like, in, like 10 yeah, or 15 Because generally it sounds worse. But, yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah. worse. That's yeah. why he put I the reverb on. sound bad. Yeah, it freaked him out. But the, I mean, the whole, the song just sounds great. It does. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. It Unfortunately, we listened closely to it, and now we feel judged by David yeah. Bowie. Yeah. And, I, and I just feel like philosophically... David Bowie is really patting himself on the back for achieving a goal uh, that perhaps he didn't achieve because maybe he wrote a Bruce Springsteen song. Uh, (laughs) Now, every week, we take one of the greatest hits in the history of music Mm -hmm. and make it even greater. We punch it up. Mm -hmm. But I have a different goal this week, which is I'm hoping that the punch will make Julian cry. Wow. I hope wow. that we... Ain't there one gosh darn punch, punch up. up that can make me break down and cry. Yeah, that's my dream. It's never happened before. Wow. Um, I'm excited to hear. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to play you a song that hopefully makes you <laughs> makes cry. Makes me break down, yeah. That'd be that'd be that'd great. be awesome. That'd be great video. That'd be, that'd be that'd be great for our first video yeah. episode. Yeah, podcast the only thing that can sure. make me cry is the final episode of it, like six plus year sitcom. I don't think anybody's <laughs> cried on this show before. <laughs> if you're like me, you're nursing a cup of coffee all day long. It's a big part of your life. Why not make it taste great every time, every day? That's why I want to talk to you about Trade Coffee. It's a business that delivers you coffee that is amazing from roasters around America. And they do it on your schedule, to your taste. What I love about Trade Coffee is they've partnered with small coffee shops across America that are brewing their own beans. So you're not supporting some huge corporate monolith when you sign up for trade. You're supporting all these small businesses, and they do an amazing job of matching your taste. You fill out a quiz when you sign up, so the coffee that shows up is the kind of coffee you like. And you can set your grind to whatever it needs to be if you're an AeroPress or a drip coffee or an espresso person. I curated a collection that you can try out on our trade site, uh, drinktrade.com slash jam. It says Evan's Faves right there. Give it a whirl. And if you want to support small businesses and brew the best cup of coffee you've ever made at home, it's time to try Trade Coffee. Right now, Trade is offering our listeners a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping. That's drinktrade.com slash jam for $30 off. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition. It's AG1 from Athletic Greens. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. There's no need for a million different types of supplements and pills to look out for your health. I was a multivitamin guy, and now I can kind of nurse a cup of AG1 by Athletic Greens in the morning, and I find it much more relaxing. And frankly, the taste is good. It's kind of like a a tropical juice flavor. Yeah, it's it's lemony. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, quite fresh. Uh, I pretend that I'm beachside when I'm drinking it. Uh, for me, the probiotics has been a big pro. It's not just a multivitamin, but it also includes probiotics. So yes, in my sedentary lifestyle, I need vitamin D. Sure, I need a lot of vitamins, but I also need to improve my gut health. This AG1 has got me covered in that department. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Punch up again. That is athleticgreens.com slash punch up to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay, we're back and let's talk about what we did. We absolutely 100% punched up this classic song, the song that debuted Bowie in America. It's much better. Uh, I would say we finally 
achieve for the first time ever David Bowie's goal of his words, not mine, <laughs> uh, singing, being British people, singing ethnic music in the age of music. Mm. His words, not mine. I'll tell you what I wanted to change about it was how complainy and finger waggy and judgy David Bowie is about the lifestyle of working class Americans who think they can achieve the American dream, but can't. Hmm. And basically to me, this is now a cold take. Perhaps it was fresh in the 70s. Here we are 40, 50 years later, and everyone knows that capitalism sucks and is not working for people. This is a cold take. Like this is, we're past that. Bowie's song is barely postmodern to, to say so, like, America ain't so great. Yeah. We're at this point... Yeah, in our culture, we are like triple postmodern. He, he was barely post Nixon. Now we're post Reagan. We're wow. post George W. Bush. So many we're, presidents. We're to post. Hate on. We're post <laughs> Obama's not closing Guantanamo Bay on yeah. day one and wearing tan suits. Yeah, we're and we're post Donald Trump. You mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing to say about Trump. He was a good one. <laughs> uh, Get him you out of here. Yeah, you're gonna have to change that pop spring. The pop. <laughs> Pop uh, screen. I made Andrew do a spit, a spit take. take on my pop screen. Um, okay, so basically, we rewrote the song with some things that actually need criticizing. I cannot go. wait to hear yeah, it. Here it is. <laughs> I just know what is going to come, and it's not <laughs> a song. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it feels good. You leave this in, you leave in the sax. Hopefully, it'll make you cry. They spend the day getting catfished, he swipes around. Oh my god. Damn. She found a young Nigerian. The, the, the freedom of being able to write a, a song without rhymes. Shouldn't even be allowed. Oh, so pure. It's major Robert Frost tennis with a net down energy. <laughs> you can really just go down any path. He said only kids will know. She laughed at all his Minecraft jokes. He looked like just 20 years, but he was a midnight. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, if he lied about his age, that's a left swipe. Yeah. You probably, probably show up on the date, realize he's. A young millennial after you're already there. This is terrible. <laughs> Are you good at... <laughs> oh, that's a tasty sax solo. There's only one 90s kid that could be. Who could be playing the sax? Do you remember? Oh. Your President Clinton. Oh it was my Bill God. Clinton. The whole time. Do you Just... remember Bubba? Strolling right onto Arsenio Hall. Mm -hmm. If you know about Bill Clinton, you're old. If yes. you know about if you know about the Arsenio Hall show. <laughs> Very different Beatles reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn my Ponzi scheme. <laughs> oh my. Hey, there one damn TikTok that can make me break down and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so good. Oh. When you cross Sub over from the TikTok, <laughs> hitting your for you page to finally, oh. finally hitting the subscribe button. Oh. All right, this is leaving me with a big thought. Uh, I hope this isn't offensive, but it's oh God, what's painfully on the nose. And I wonder if all the things mm -hmm. in Bowie's song were painfully on the nose. Like when he goes, a pimp's got a caddy and a lady got a Chrysler where the people listening going, I, I, it's been said a million times. <laughs> Everyone's always making that joke. <laughs> Because everybody at that time had a Chrysler. Yeah. Ain't there a child I can hold without judging? Ah, uh, uh, It me. It me. I'm always <laughs> judging children. <laughs> it me, IRL. 
I like how the one, the, the beautiful thing is that the Beatles have become no less relevant. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, you can't change the Beatles reference. You should have. Must have a Beatles reference. You should have put like a Ch- Charlie Puth <laughs> line. We should have. We should have put a Charlie Puth line. If you took out the day in the life reference and it was just, it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's a long day when you're grinding nonstop. Yeah, mama's got cramps and look at yeah. his hands ache. There's one thing it's... we can all agree on and that's that hustle culture sucks. Yeah. That's what we're finger wagging about today. We're not finger wagging no, about I'm, capitalism and the yeah, collapse. Of the if American you're working dream. as a janitor on the bathroom floor, good on you. Mm-hmm. We won't wag our finger at you. But if you're trying, we won't wag our finger at you for having to have a side hustle. But we will wag our finger at you for bragging about your side hustle. Yeah, on your Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah. I, this song is punched up, guys. It's, I think song. it's great. Yeah. It was fresh. Yeah. I like the. I like the like millennial Gen Z conversation going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, some generational warfare, and the background vocals still slap. If I do say so myself, <laughs> yeah. Pop off. <laughs> uh, we didn't get Julian to cry, so I think I always regard it as oh, a failure. I will but, once uh, I leave. Okay, okay. Send, so send it's us not a punched pic. up. Send us a picture. We'll post it on the show's Instagram. I think Punch what it is jam. is that I thought I was Gen Z, and then I knew who Clinton was. <laughs> and I went, oh, you're like, oh, you're oh, a young millennial. Maybe I don't. Oh, no. Maybe I'm a young millennial. Yeah. Have you ever watched an episode of the Arsenio Hall show? Uh, I've seen YouTube clips. Is that? Is that? Maybe you're Gen Z. That could be Gen Z. Maybe you're Gen Z. I think I'm Gen Z. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think if you watch the Arsenio Hall show, you're probably an old millennial. I know I yeah. am Gen Z, but mm. maybe you're introducing a new. You're, like, cu- you're cusp. You're, cusp. You're like cusp Gen Z, just like I'm cusp millennial. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I feel like I'm I'm a man without a nation. Honestly. I was born in the '90s, but mm. don't know the '90s. You know, sure. but a lot of my friends have in this conversation that early 2000s culture is literally just '90s culture. Yeah, Evan mm-hmm. and I have Re-skin, a long-standing yeah. theory that decades start in the fourth year, right? Yeah. Like yeah. if you see a picture the from 1962, don't start till yeah, it doesn't like look. 100% of people would be like, oh, a picture from the 1950s. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. only when 64 hits that people start growing their hair exactly. over their ears, yeah. you know? Rachel so. didn't do her haircut until November 1993. Wow. Yeah. Know? So 2000, 2003, still the 90s, culturally. Cool. Culturally. I was and 15 then. Yeah, the odds hit in 2004. Yeah. Julian, thanks so much for coming on. It's honestly a shame we have this to even so much finish. Fun. Uh, but thanks for bringing Young Americans. Oh, I loved it as a pick. pick. Savage pick. I loved it. I and I love your hot take that David Bowie sucks. He sucks. Uh, <laughs> I. I uh, <laughs> he's an embarrassment. You know, I said the biggest lover of David Bowie. This I time. I recently on the podcast shared an opinion that I acknowledged was mm-hmm. bad. I said I have a bad opinion that I'm going to share. It? I know this is wrong. I wish my opinion mm-hmm. was different, even. Mm-hmm. And my opinion was that I don't really like Prince. Yeah. I was like, doesn't really hit for me. Oh, pure, pure I like opinion. And yeah. pe- people were mad about it, even yeah. though like I wasn't saying like, like I said, my, that that's a bad opinion. Yeah, I wish my opinion was different. And you knew I it. I don't even. I wouldn't even say I like dislike Prince. I just don't. I don't regard him to be as like a god tier. I like rock a couple person. Prince songs. Yeah, but I'm also you know, I haven't gone as deep into his music. I either. shouldn't yeah. talk more about it because it made people so mad. But why drag yourself? What I was trying to say. What I was trying to say is, every week we finish the podcast. With a little segment called Walk in Music. What is your walk in music? And it's a segment where we talk about a scenario that we're mm-hmm. walking into, uh, hopefully fictional and hopefully hilarious. Good luck. Oh, uh oh. Wow. Um, and what song we would play. It could be you're walking into a worldwide wrestling match yeah. and smashing someone over the yeah, yeah, yeah. head with a folding chair. Uh, you could be the closing pitcher for the Mets uh-huh. in game six of the World Series, uh-huh. uh, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, uh, my scenario this week is I've accidentally become a fascist because of my raging cocaine addiction, and so I'm <laughs> so moving from my home back to Europe. Ooh, that's <laughs> relaxing. It doesn't very feel very smooth. fascist. Mm. Very smooth. Could be fascist, but very much coming down from a cocaine high. Yeah, I get that. This is more of a sedatives. Vibe. You're like on the airplane. Yeah. Snorting off the... Uh, they're they're yeah. they're telling you to put up the, the the tray table, and it's just like white. <laughs> what is the name of this track, Anna? What are we what are we listening to? Uh, let's, uh, let's let the chorus announce it. I hear. I, th- I think we're almost you there. Got four more bars here. 
Mm, I love it, I love it. Mm, funky I like the My wardrobe falling. feels looser just listening to this. Breezy. Leaving LA. LA. This yes. is Leaving LA yeah. by the band Deliverance. Oh, a song geez. I've always loved and that I discovered earlier today when I Googled songs about leaving LA. <laughs> this is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> really? <No>. Well, yeah. <laughs> you got me. This well, is the second hit after a 13 minute song also called Leaving LA by Josh Tillman. Wow. Father John Misty and I said, I'll go no, with the short you. one. Yes. <laughs> well, it's also extremely smooth and felt very smooth. smooth and it fit into the ep for me. I want to say it's sort of a walk out song, so I'll do my flip okay. on your idea, which is Becoming This a is fascist? my walk in song to being an American, a young American rolling up into Britain where you can enjoy the pleasures of being an attractive foreigner. Okay. Everyone loves it when a Brit comes here and talks in their funny accent. Here I am. You know this song. You love it when this thing comes on. And this is me stepping foot into the arrivals terminal. This is number one oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. This, this is me, the American boy, here to meet and seduce your women mm. with my flat affect and accent from the mid-Atlantic states. <laughs> this is like the opposite of the of like the of the low class guys from Love Actually who go to America to pick up girls because they 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 can talk like this in their British accents and all the American girls are like oh you're British yeah but the principle is the same yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's you're exactly right and this is me being a young American boy and not worried about losing my American dream I'm achieving it just by going to Britain that's my scenario. Love thank it. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, everybody is twenty percent sexier in foreign yeah, nations. I think so. That's, yeah, that, that's the law, right? That's it's true, a NATO thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Canceling my flight. Yeah, <laughs> you're to like yeah. Portugal. Julian, what's your scenario? Uh, you guys seem like you had yours prepared. Um, my scenario, which I'm coming up with a little bit on the fly, is uh, this song is uh, I'm a is for uh, my alternate reality of myself where I'm incredibly toxic and um, I, 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 uh, I guilt people into loving me. Mm, okay. And so this is, uh, I'm at uh, the Hungry Ghost Cafe in Park Slope. Okay. And uh, d- this, this uh, person who I've been crushing on hard uh, turned me down and, and I just, I, I come in and I ask the Hungry Ghost Cafe to play this song, and it's subliminal. So it's subliminal messaging. Coffee That's shop, very overt. I love it. Yeah, it let's hear it. And I just kind of look at them mm. and do that face that Bowie makes, which is like, "Is this right?" Because <laughs> this song is about being alone and sad, and I'm better than that. Yeah, because I'm a, another person. You know, they're gonna be alone and sad without. I gotta you. say, yeah. it's, it's pretty off-putting. What, yeah, what, it's what, pretty are, what are we listening to? Uh, we're listening to Jonathan Richmond's "A Plea for Tenderness" from his live album with the Modern Lovers. If you care about me, and if you care about your wow. Well, Very strange it is, this song. is a good litmus <laughs> test. This, if this person is for you, they'll respond to it. This yeah. is a great. If they're as toxic as This is a filter I. mechanism. Yeah. This is a litmus test. It's not like a vibey song. Not, I don't know if like, I only, I only listen to this song to laugh. Yeah, well, you know, every song is vibey depending on what vibe you're going for. And this is a type of vibration that pushes me away. <laughs> A yeah, this, I mean, it's, it's perfect for your toxic alter ego because it's he's it's just like, like a, listen to the words. It's like a neg. It's like yeah, a neg in it's song. The ultimate, the ultimate neg yeah. in song. Wow. Well, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, the purpose of the song is to make someone feel bad. Great pick. Yeah. <laughs> Julian, I have to say, it's been such a pleasure to surf through this Bowie song with you. But I know you as a David Bowie fan, and thank mm-hmm. you so much for lending us your knowledge. But we only did the one song. What else could you say about, like, what are your top five David Bowie songs? Yes, this is very important. My top five David Bowie songs, none of which will be ones that you maybe have heard of. Okay. That might be condescending. That's a brag. Wow, yeah, humble brag. brag. Yeah. I would say a conversation piece. Haven't heard of it. Nope. Sorrow. No Haven't idea. heard of it. Yeah. 
Word on a Wing. I haven't heard of it. Mm. Zeros? Mm. Now I'm just questioning that I host a music podcast. <laughs> and yeah. Sound and Vision, which you have. Okay, we know Sound and Vision. Okay. Yeah. Those are my yeah, favorite that's Bowie songs, and none of them are hits. Wow. Listen to all of them. They're really good. Yeah, yeah that was and that was a saucy take. A fantastic oh, voyage. <laughs> oh, behave. Well, this was so much fun. Thank, Thank you for you having so much, me. Dude. Where you. can people follow you? This is crucial. I need people oh, yes. to Would you prefer that they recess follow therapy recess now? therapy or would they prefer that they that they follow your Finsta? What's your Finsta? Oh, follow say it, my... Say it, on, say it on mic so your parents can follow your Finsta. My Finsta is uh, at Dirty Boy 7 No. Um, wow. Wow. Oh, it's, I've had seven wow. accounts. And, Read the you know. room, Julian. Oh, wow, yikes. Uh, my real Instagram is at Julian MSB. My MSB. show's page is at recess underscore therapy. You can also get to my page through that page. Great. And we'll link to it in yes. the show's we'll description. Link to us. Go follow we'll Recess Therapy. If Very nothing strong else, recommendation. Improve your life by following Recess watch, Therapy. If you missed it, go watch J- Julian's interview with Tariq. It's pretty watch funny. It. It's incredible. It's the, the many commentators even. And I'd Neutral like, observers are saying it's the most wholesome moment in the history people like it. of the internet. People please, like please, it. Please, we please all did a good it. job. People like it. And uh, the last thing I'll plug just before we oh, go yeah. is uh, the Bowie documentary uh, is coming out I think this month. Oh, this is the wow. most wholesome plug of somebody oh, else's great. content. That's yeah. really beautiful. I'll watch that. And I of really course, you can Bowie. get all of our punch ups on our Patreon.com slash Gregory Brothers. This has been Punch Up the Jam. Let's punch it. Yeah. Yeah. We punched it. We punched it. Woo! Woo! We punched it. Now we're going to get up and dance. We punched it. <laughs> you got to admit, we punched it. Now you're obligated. You got to go out there and follow all the things. Hit up the Patreon. It was in the. Yeah, you got to sub the Patreon. It's yeah, in the it's, song. It's in the song. Yeah, it's in the song. You have to. It's in the song. You've got to finally sub the Patreon. You've been listening to Punch Up the Jam. That was a Hidgum original.